Treasuries is an important business in Suriname as thousands of people are dependent on it. Annually, this sector accounts for about 3.5% of the gross domestic product. An important form of commercial fisheries in Suriname is seabob shrimp. 22 vessels are active in the Surinamese waters with an average annual production of 8,000 tons. Production numbers in the sector are steady. A problem that this sector faces is unwanted catch or bycatch of juvenile sharks and rays and other non-commercial fish species. In the past, marine turtles were a part of that bycatch as well. In 1994, the mandatory use of the turtle excluder device or TED was implemented in commercial shrimp fisheries in Suriname. Even though positive results came out of the application of this first model, a newer model with improved efficiency and effectiveness was developed, the Trash and Turtle Excluder Device, TTED. My name is Nick Hopkins. I am a fisheries gear and method equipment specialist, or a fishery specialist for NOAA Fisheries. I'm here to help Suriname uh, further develop their TED program for the sea bob fishery. Um, what we have here are the three TEDs we're going to be using in this experiment. Again, this is simply bycatch reduction with a mechanical device or a sorting grid. The first option we have, we're considering the control. This is the one that's commonly used in the fisheries. It has a maximum of a four inch bar spacing. This one in particular has three inches and three quarter, three and three quarter inches. They're all going to be equipped with a double cover flap, but the opening cut is big enough to incorporate a single cover flap if they want to change it later in the experiment. Again, this one has the three inch, three and a three quarter bar spacing. This one, everything's the same, with the exception it has two and three quarter inch bar spacing. And our last option, last configuration of grid, has two inch bar spacing or inch and three quarter bar spacing. Again, they all have double cover flaps with an opening big enough to incorporate a single cover later in the experiment. With the smaller bar spacing, we're using a material called flat bar. It, um, since you're using a smaller space between the bars, you're using a smaller material to make the bars. So once we've stepped away from the standard, we diminish the face to a quarter inch. The standard, the face is close to a half inch. So as we diminish the bass basin, we also diminish the, the grid material itself. As you increase the amount of material in the grids, you also have to increase the flotation because it gets heavier. Uh, the standard, the control, uh, already inherently has ample flotation because of a situation with uh, sediment and mud. So we've started out where normally we would only need, require two floats. For the Surinamese fishery, we've incorporated four for the standard grid, for the control. As we increase in weight, we've added two additional floats. So this one has in total six. And for the two inch bar spacing, we've incorporated the, the floats that they that are standardly it is equipped with already, which uh, would be close to, let me see, that'd be 15, 30, about 45 pounds of flotation altogether total. The, the smaller floats, these are around seven pounds of flotation each. And you'll see this one has six where the control has four. Before the TTAT trial started, the gear was prepared by putting together the different parts of the net. First, the TTAT was placed in the net. After lifting it, the angle of the TTAT was determined and the cod end was sewn in. This was done for all four nets. Three nets were fitted with conventional 4-inch TEDs and one with the experimental 3-inch flat bar T-TED. On September 30th, we finished our sea trials aboard the K Hadassa. We had uh, the 3-inch bass basin versus the control installed in two of the outside rigs of a net that was rigged with four trawls. The two trawls in the middle were left in a commercial configuration the boat normally tows. This way the captains on board can have a, a visual reference to what they normally would catch compared to what the experiment would be catching. We had the control 
and the uh, experimental three inch bar spacing on both sides of the boat. We swapped it out midway between. We only did three toes, but we had the opportunity to swap things out to see if there was any difference in the trawls themselves. We found that in comparison, the three inch and the control were comparably the same. Um, there was noticeably a little bit more uh, shrimp landing with the three inch bar spacing, but within the two or even the initial uh, primary toe, within three toes, the, the information is just a visual reference and by no means indicates anything indicative of how the gear is fishing. It was a successful shakedown cruise. It gave us the opportunity to go through the protocols we need to uh, exercise during this experiment. The lead scientists had the opportunity to be able to identify what your select species were and how to process them. Uh, often when you have a commercial boat, you operate with uh, your landed target, which is in this case sea bob, but you also have uh, secondary species such as chondratiki, butterfish, and a few others. They were ready to select those out, but we made sure that we selected out all the side grades, not just the ones that are marketably interesting. So. Uh, the shakedown was uh, an eye-opener for all of us, and I believe this experiment has the potential to find some really interesting information. The catches of the experimental and control net were analyzed to study the differences in catch performance. First, the total catch of each net was assessed by placing the catch in baskets, which were weighed. Then, the catch of each net was sorted. To reduce the, um, the bycatch, the fishery has, um, the fishery has adopted uh, two major um, devices in their trawls, namely a turtle excluder device um, and a bycatch reduction device. The turtle excluder device, or TET, is mainly um, used to, um, to reduce the bycatch of sea turtles and is actually very effective in this. And um, the bycatch reduction device is a, is a square mesh panel, a panel of larger meshes. Um, to allow small fish to escape from the net. The bycatch was separated from the target shrimp catch and sorted into finfish, sharks and rays, jellyfish and invertebrates. All components of the catch were weighed and everything was noted down on special forms. This information was later analyzed and allowed judging the difference in catch performance between the control net with a conventional TED and the experimental net with the T-TED. The T-TED comes in various models with different bar spacing. This spacing is needed to select what type of fish will remain in the net and what will pass through. Here in Suriname we're going to be looking closer at bar spacing to see how it assists them in reducing the bycatch interaction within their sea bob fishery. In September 2014, a workshop was held for the shrimp trawl fisheries in Suriname. The purpose of this workshop was to show the possibilities of TTADS and BRD in reducing the bycatch in shrimp trawl fisheries. This workshop was held in collaboration with the Surinamese Fisheries Department and NOAA. WWF Guyanas supported this initiative. Whatever is possible within this fishery in terms of the mechanical and, and practical separation uh, and now what can we do with the species that we still are catching um, and then it's a good story to find markets for it but I think it's really that stepwise approach that needs to, needs to be applied. During the workshop the results of the two square mesh panels that were sent to the USA for testing were shown. The 120 mesh panel performed well but the 130 mesh stressed too much, so the meshes became too narrow for the fish to escape. Therefore, it is advised for all Surinamese trawlers to use the 120 mesh panel. The initial sea trials with support of NOAA aimed to establish a data collection protocol that is both practical on board the sea bob vessels as well as scientifically sound. As discussed during the workshop, this was a crucial first step. To fully evaluate the potential of a new adaptation to the fishing gear, such as inserting a T-TED instead of a normal TED, Noah advised to make at least 30 comparative toes and analyze the catches. 
In this way, a good picture can be established on the performance of the gear. In 2016, two data collection trips were done by the LVV Fisheries Department to further test the potential of TTEDs in the CBOP fishery. The 3-inch TED was tested in July 2016, followed by the 2-inch in August 2016. For each TTED, data was collected from 31 toes of normal fishing. Both the 3-inch and 2-inch TTED showed an increased capture of CBOP shrimp, the target species. A statistically significant increase of up to 16% was observed. On the other hand, both TTEDs reduced the amount of bycatch in the fishery. As expected, largest bycatch reductions were observed for the 2-inch bar spacing TTED. However, with the use of the 2-inch TTED, the bycatch of valuable fish such as Kandratiki, Boaterfish, and Dagutifi was reduced by 23%. The 3 inch TTED did not significantly affect the catch of fish that is usually retained on board the CBOP trawlers. The 3 inch TTED, therefore, seems to present a good compromise between the reduction of unwanted bycatch, such as rays, and retention of valuable fish. Unfortunately, very few rays were present in the fishing grounds during the sea trials with both TTEDs. Therefore, it is recommended to do some further trials with the TTEDs to fully understand their functioning before they are introduced in the fishery.